So this is, um, yeah, let's, as I said, there's a lot of import, uh, important information, uh, the latest information available on H1B registrations. And so let's dive into that directly. Um, the H1B registrations final rule, there's been significant change in the way registrations are going to be done this year when compared to the previous years. You know, well, for those of you who don't know, last year was um, yes. because of multiple registrations. Beneficiaries filed um, duplicate registrations. Some beneficiaries filed five registrations and 10. I heard that one beneficiary filed 100 and more registrations. So what happened is um, because of that, um, you know, USCIS has been looking at those duplicate multiple registrations and they want to make sure that the beneficiary has a valid job offer for each registration. And so they sent out, um, you know, once the registrations were done, they sent out, sent out an advisory that if there are multiple registrations, then they would be looking into it carefully to see if there's a valid job offer for each registration. So as a result of that, uh, many beneficiaries got scared and did not proceed with their H1, even though they were picked in the lottery. In addition to that, the companies colluded and filed um, multiple registrations. Uh, when I say colluded, they uh, got together with other companies and uh, filed the same uh, beneficiaries uh, through both companies or through the three companies or four companies so that they could share resources uh, once you know they're picked so that they could increase the chances of you know the beneficiary getting uh, picked. So that collusion is not allowed and uh, USCIS sent out again an advisory that if they found any collusion um, they would take serious you know action for fraud um, and as a result of which also uh, a lot of people who filed uh, who colluded, a lot of companies did um, got picked in the lottery, but did not proceed with their um, H1 filing. So a lot of H1s, um, as a result of which a lot of registrations um, were wasted, and USCIS had to do another lottery pick, uh, uh, where they picked about seventy-five thousand cases there, also in the in the second lottery, um, and it was a, basically a mess. Um, with not many um, employees um, as usual filing. So this year, thankfully, they came up with some additional uh, rules that would um, kind of discourage beneficiaries from filing multiple registrations. So this final rule is expected to take effect on March 4th. That's 30 days after the official publication. So that means this um, rule would be in effect for this particular cap season. Uh, and basically the rule is that uh, the registration, the lottery would this time be beneficiary centric, where USCIS will select um, the lottery by unique beneficiary rather than by registration. So this new process is designed to reduce, reduce um, the potential for gaming the system by filing multiple registrations without a valid job offer. So this way, when uh, beneficiaries know that no matter how many registrations they file, they'll only be picked once based on their passport ID, passport number, you know, they they no longer uh, will file multiple registrations. So this is something that uh, that you know everyone has been suggesting USCIS do, but they haven't done it uh, earlier. But thankfully, they're doing it now for this um, this um, cap season. Also, another update is that um, the start date flexibility. So they'll allow for a start date, uh, any start date, as long as it's after October first. Um, they, so they're being at least um, flexible with the start dates. Anything after October 1st, um, as long as it's within the same fiscal year, so October to October is when the fiscal year is, 
as long as it's within the same fiscal year, they will accept that start date. So that, keep that in mind. So start date, um, the lottery pick being based on the beneficiary ID. And uh, third is um, some measures have been taken to codify um, USCIS's ability to deny or revoke H-1B petition where um, the registration contained a false attestation or was otherwise invalid for some other reason. Um, and USCIS then has the power to deny or revoke uh, the uh, even the H-1B petition after it's approved. Also, if the fee uh, is declined, then and they're not able to reconcile that and they're not able to get the fee, then also they could invalidate a submission. So two things, one, they could deny a H-1 or, or revoke a H-1 after approval or deny a H-1 after it is filed if they find that the registration attestations were incorrect. For example, if they say, uh, if, if there was no valid job offer, for example, and the registration was done, they can easily, on that basis itself, deny the H-1. Uh, also, um, if the fee doesn't go through at a later point of time, it first gets approved and doesn't go through for some reason, then as well they could, you know, invalidate that H-1B sub submission. 